AABIP video educational series, Alumisite Setup. Anesthesia considerations for Alumisite and peripheral bronchoscopy procedures in general include the following. General anesthesia is preferred to moderate sedation so the subsequent anesthesia maneuvers can be performed. An endotracheal tube is preferred for paralytic administration and to safely administer high peak. Paralytics are required because digital tomosynthesis requires a 20-second breath hold maneuver. While data does not show that a recruitment maneuver in high peat improved diagnostic yield, they may help prevent atelectasis. The lowest and safest FiO2 is recommended to prevent resorption atelectasis. Procedure room equipment orientation will vary depending on space and resources and there is wide institutional variation. Room mapping is performed first. The process of mapping involves positioning the equipment as one would for a procedure and then assessing for electromagnetic interference that could impact accuracy of navigation. This would include the procedure bed, anesthesia machine, and other metallic equipment. Metallic equipment is kept away from the procedure bed so as not to cause interference. If no electromagnetic interference occurs, that equipment orientation should then be the same with each procedure to help prevent future electromagnetic interference. This is an example of many of a procedure room setup. Anesthesia is positioned to the right, close to the head of the bed. The bronchoscope tower is to the head of the bed on the left. The fluoroscopy C-arm comes in just below the bronchoscopy tower. The alumocyte tower is at the foot of the bed. Because the alumocyte tower will be obscured by the C-arm, the navigation images are routed to monitors at the front and off to the side of the procedure room. Again, this is one example of many of procedure room setup. Positioning the patient on the location board. The shoulders should be at or below the top of the location board. The sensors are placed on the chest as follows. The sternal sensor is placed two finger breasts below the sternal notch. The yellow dot should be within the white box as shown. In this example, tape is used to secure the sensors. The screen is advanced and the left-sided sensor is placed on the chest so the yellow dot is in the white box. This is repeated for the right side. The screen is advanced and the patient details are confirmed. Fluoroscopy settings for digital tomosynthesis. This example is with the GE 9800 C-arm. These two buttons represent edge enhancement and noise filter. First, press the edge enhancement button. Edge enhancement should be at the seventh dash as shown here. Next, press the noise filter button. The noise filter should be at zero. In this image, the noise filter is set at maximum. Here, it is set to zero. Next, choose the correct frame rate. If this screen is visible, press the Special Modification button. This screen should appear with the OK button on the screen. Press the OK button. Then press the Mode button. This screen will appear and should look like this. Select the Rate button and select 15 PPS. Then select Exit. Fluoroscopy C-arm orientation. For digital tomosynthesis, the C-arm must be perpendicular to the procedure bed and all C-arm angles must be set to zero. In this schematic, the black arrow represents the 90 degree orientation of the C-arm in relation to the procedure bed and the patient. This image shows the correct position of the C-arm prior to digital tomosynthesis. The C-arm is positioned above the patient in the anterior posterior position with the lateral oblique angle set to zero. Look here to ensure this angle is set to zero. Also, look here to ensure that the cephalad caudate angle is set to zero. In this example, a bronchoscope holder is used. This is not mandatory, but allows for catheter stability and allows the operator to stand further back from the C-arm to improve radiation safety. This is one way to orient views during a procedure. Here, the fluoroscopy image monitor is located, the navigation monitor, and the radial endobronchial ultrasound image. In summary, discussion with anesthesia prior to the procedure is essential for success with alumocyte and digital tomosynthesis. Equipment orientation is variable but should allow the operator 
the ability to perform the procedure successfully without causing electromagnetic interference. And finally, ensure proper fluoroscopy settings and serum orientation to the patient prior to performing digital tomosynthesis.